Hello everyone, and welcome to another Family Friday. We're so excited to have you here with us. We're hoping to help you start your weekend off right with fun activities, tons of amazing giveaways, and tips to get the most out of General Conference with your family. I'm Scott, one of the Regional Store Directors at Deseret Book, and I'm so excited to introduce you to some very special guests and to show you all of the fun things we'll be giving away tonight. Be sure to stick around to see what you can win and how to enter. You can also earn 20% off any online order at DeseretBook.com starting now until midnight tonight. Just use code SPCONF2021. SPCONF2021 when you check out. And we'll also link it in the comments below this video. To start us off, I'd like to introduce you to Rio Grange from Work and Wonder with some helpful ideas to make conference more meaningful. Hello everyone, my name is Rio Grange and I am the designer of the original General Conference workbook by Work and Wonder. And I am so excited today, I just wanna tell you a little bit more about the workbook, how to use it, some things I have learned from our community and how to take notes and share two things that my family and I do to get ready for conference every time it rolls around. So our workbooks feature a new artist every season, and this April 2021 workbook features the art of Amber Eldridge. Some pieces are original that she and I have collaborated on, and some you have seen before. Um, inside, you're gonna have a table of contents, you're gonna have a section that helps you prepare for conference. You are going to have five different sections, one for every session of general conference. A little pro tip on how to take notes. Sometimes this full spread per one address might be intimidating. That's okay. Some people prefer to do just the first page the first time they're listening to an address, and then when they come back to revisit a message, they'll use the second page. Another thing our community has done and has actually taught me is to use two different color pens. So maybe the first time you listen, you do use the whole spread, but you use one color of a pen. And then when you come back to revisit the message, you use a different color and you see what stood out to you differently. Because the prompts are just a little bit different on each side of the page, just to help us know what to listen for and keep our minds really engaged. And then towards the back of the workbook, we have a section to help you review. Because oftentimes we are filled with so much goodness, but we're left thinking, okay, now what? What do I do with all of this? And so we help you notice if there were any recurring promptings or themes. And then here, we'll go ahead and we'll set goals or we'll commit to how we want to restudy. Maybe you do a social media fast to help the messages really soak in. And then you'll set up a study program. Maybe this is something that you do on your own and you just want to review the talks in order. You can list them all here. Or if you study with Work and Wonder, you can put our order there and the page number corresponding to where you took notes in the workbook. Okay, and if you have littles, conference is for them too. And that's what this workbook is all about. This we've created with Vania. She is our illustrator and she's from Portugal. And she's done such a beautiful job that we keep bringing her back. And she has illustrated the previous three children's workbooks. And inside you're gonna find activities. This is our prep week chain. Here it is all done up. And so this corresponds with the original workbook as well so that you can prepare as a family. And it gives them a little something to do each day. But the activities throughout this not only help keep their hands busy and reverent, but also activities to help their minds to focus on what they are hearing and to listen for certain things so that they can practice that. Okay, and two things that my family and I do every conference is first, we will always come with questions. This is just a way that we can actively listen and participate in general conference. Sometimes you receive answers in the messages and sometimes they come later. But either way, we know that God answers us in his time, right? And, but it helps us to come with questions. It also helps us to know what is on our heart and what we are seeking. And it gives us an opportunity to bring that to the Lord. And the second thing we'll do is be prayerful about who we can invite to watch General Conference. Now we used to invite them over and though that is not the case anymore, I still want to be prayerful about who I can invite to come feel Christ's love. Maybe they know what General Conference is, maybe they don't, but I think where the world is right now, we are all yearning for a little bit more of that peace and the good news of Christ. And I'm wishing you all a happy General Conference weekend and I can't wait to tune in with all of you. Wow, these workbooks are beautiful and I love that even my kids can get involved. Thank you so much, Rio. Now, if you don't already have a workbook for this weekend, that's okay. They're great to have as you revisit conference talks over the next six months. And we will have new Work and Wonder General Conference workbooks available in the fall for next conference. You can win one of the fall workbooks by entering our giveaway. 
Just type in work and wonder in the comments and you will be entered to win. Next up, we have Carrie Ann Cheney from Oh Sweet Basil with a special guest who will help us learn a fun, easy recipe from her new cookbook, Raised in the Kitchen. Hey everyone, it's Carrie Ann from Oh Sweet Basil and I brought the most handsome guest I could possibly think of to help me make a recipe for all of you today. This is my son, Grayson. He's five years old and a total pro in the kitchen. Unless he has to eat something he doesn't like, which happens like nine times out of 10. But that's okay, we'll talk about picky eaters in just a minute, because I promise I have solutions for you. Grayson, do you want to tell them what we're going to make today? We're gonna to make monster cookie bites. Monster cookie energy bites, the perfect thing for after school snacks, getting through hot days of summer, and even to make it through all the sessions of general conference. Trust me, our family revolves around snacking during that time, so these are important to have on hand. Okay, so we've got a brand new cookbook that's about to come out called Raised in the Kitchen, and this is the recipe we're going to be making today. We want to make a cookbook that's all about what really happens in the kitchen, the connections, the moments, the people, so whether you've never cooked at all and you need the help, or you're looking to teach your children how to cook, this is the book. Everything you need to know to teach them how to cook. Everything from breakfast to dinner to dessert and in between. Okay, Grayson, let's get started. So, what are we going to put in the bowl first? We're gonna put um, honey. Ooh, honey, okay. Do you wanna scrape it in? Yep little spatula. Do you guys know the secret to honey? Always spray your dish with a little bit of non-stick spray and it will run right out, especially when little kids are involved. So I was raised in the kitchen. I remember running home from school, throwing my backpack right there in front of the door and my mom saying, carry on, put your backpack away, going in the kitchen and mom was whipping up something delicious and she let me hop up on the counter and say carry on use floss to cut these cinnamon rolls it goes through so much better and our cinnamon rolls will turn out perfect okay grayson what's next what's this this is oats oats okay dump in the oats so it made me feel so special and she didn't have to say anything important but she made me feel seen she made me feel wanted I love that. Okay, now the peanut butter. Yep. All right. It's going to be so good. It is going to be so good. What are these? Chocolate chips. Mini chocolate chips. I'm dumping in raisins. And I know you're going to want to do this one. Yep, good job. Putting things in little bowls kind of might seem like an extra mess or an extra step. But sometimes it's good for little hands that tend to... He just picked one out for himself. He can't make this stuff up. It's kind of good for little ones. Here, go ahead and dump them all in. Make it like a rainbow. Oh, you are so good at dumping things in bowls. I happen to have really big muscles, so would you mind if I stir this one together and then I'll have you help roll it into balls. I've got another cutie off to the side who's going to grab us. Just a cookie sheet with either a sill pad or parchment paper on it because these do get awful sticky. So I'm just stirring it all together and we just use regular oats. If all you have on hand is quick oats. That's a-okay. All right, we're all done. So Grayson and I are going to finish these up. We're just going to be rolling them into balls and putting them out onto the tray so that we can snack on them in just a bit. What do you think, Grayson? These are the best! <laughs> I think you've got a little extra here on your hands. Do you see that M&M? &M? <laughs> All right, we hope you guys enjoy this recipe. Can't wait to hear if you make it. And if you do, try your own mix-ins. Ask your kids what they would like to put in so that they can start experimenting in the kitchen. Marshmallows, hello, s'mores would be so good. See you all later. Well, now my stomach's growling and my mouth is watering. Those monster cookie energy bites look so tasty. Thank you, Carrie Ann and Grayson. If you've been into a Deseret bookstore lately and picked up your free general conference packet, this full recipe is included in there for you. So you can make these yummy treats with your kids. 
You can also download this conference packet for free at DeseretBook.com. We're giving away Raised in the Kitchen in our next giveaway. There are dozens of delicious recipes that are great for cooking with the whole family. To enter this giveaway, just type Raised in the Kitchen in the comments and feel free to share with us your favorite home cooked meal as well. Next up, we have an inspiring message from John Hilton III in this new five minute fireside from LDS Living, where he talks about his new book, Considering the Cross, and how Calvary can connect us with Christ. One day, a colleague and I were talking about the atonement of Jesus Christ. He asked me, John, where do you think the emphasis church members place on Gethsemane comes from? I didn't know it then, but this question would launch me on a process of discovery that would forever change how I think and feel about the Savior's atonement. I'm John Hilton, and this is my 5-Minute Fireside. We know that Christ's atonement is infinite in scale. It includes His premortal foreordination, sinless life, suffering in Gethsemane, crucifixion, resurrection, and more. But as I've surveyed more than a thousand Latter-day Saints, I've learned that many of us emphasize Gethsemane over Calvary. In fact, it's common to hear statements like, well, the most important part of Christ's atonement was in Gethsemane, or yes, Christ was crucified, but lots of other people were too. What's unique about the Savior's atonement happened in Gethsemane. The problem with those statements is simple. They're not true. The scriptures and our church leaders describe the Savior's atonement taking place in both Gethsemane and Calvary. Surprisingly though, while many of us focus more on Gethsemane, Christ's crucifixion is more frequently emphasized in both the scriptures and the words of our prophets. While at least two powerful passages of scripture explicitly teach Christ suffered for our sins in Gethsemane, more than 50 verses directly linked Christ's death with our salvation. In his speeches and writings, Joseph Smith mentioned Gethsemane one time, using it as an example of Christ submitting his will to his fathers. On more than 30 occasions, however, Joseph Smith referenced Christ's crucifixion, several of which were to describe its saving power. What's more, across thousands of talks by church leaders from the 1800s through 2020, for each one reference to the atoning power of Gethsemane, there are more than five references to the atoning power of Christ's death. In considering Christ's suffering in Gethsemane and on the cross, what's most significant to me is the Savior's personal emphasis on Calvary. On one occasion, He speaks of what transpired in Gethsemane. In contrast, Christ personally refers to His death more than 20 times. In other words, He Himself emphasizes His crucifixion. Now, please don't misunderstand me. The events that took place in Gethsemane are a significant part of the Savior's atonement. I am certainly not recommending we de-emphasize them. In fact, we should pay more attention to every facet of Christ's life, ministry, and atonement. I'm merely suggesting that perhaps we could all benefit by paying more attention to Calvary than we have in the past. Maybe you're thinking, well, don't we believe in the living Christ? Absolutely and the importance of worshiping the living Christ cannot be overstated. At the same time, we also worship the loving Christ, and Jesus Christ himself personally defined his greatest act of love as his death for us. He said, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. I think Eliza R. Snow said it well, to answer justice's great demand and seal his mission of eternal love Upon the cross poured out His precious blood. In the past, I've sometimes shied away from images of Christ's crucifixion, thinking that they were only images of death or pain. Now I understand that they are also images of Christ's triumph and His love. I appreciate these words of Dr. Jennifer Lane, a religious educator at BYU Hawaii. She said, as we think about the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, we can also know He is the life and the light of the world. Christ as the sacrifice and Christ as the living Word. We don't have to pick which one to focus on because we can't have one without the other. 
President James E. Faust taught, any increase in our understanding of Christ's atoning sacrifice draws us closer to Him. Better understanding any aspect of Christ's atonement, including His crucifixion, can deepen our relationship with the Savior. I invite us all to more carefully study Christ's crucifixion and learn all we can from the event that the Savior Himself defined as His greatest act of love. Over and over again in Scripture, Jesus Christ has emphasized the atoning power of His death. The Savior testified, My Father sent me that I might be lifted up upon the cross, that I might draw all people unto me. Christ hung on the cross not to make us feel bad, but to make us feel good. You might be worried if studying this topic will be depressing. I promise you, it's not. Christ's death is a tender and personal sacrifice for us, and our acceptance of His sacrifice can be just as tender and personal to Him. He is both the living and the loving Christ. We don't need to choose one or the other. We can embrace both. I'm John Hilton, and this has been my 5-Minute Fireside. Thank you, John. What a wonderful message. It really helped me think about the love our Savior has for us through His sacrifice. We are giving away a copy of John's new book, Considering the Cross, where he expounds on some of the principles shared in the fireside. To enter this giveaway, just enter Considering the Cross in the comments. Up next, we'll hear from Cameron Wright as he talks about the inspiration behind his new book, in times of rain and war, along with a special surprise. Check it out. Hi, I'm Cameron Wright. I'm the author of The Rent Collector, The Orphan Keeper, and some others, but I'm excited today to tell you about my new book, In Times of Rain and War. This is a story that takes place in World War II London during the Blitz, where the lives of two people come together. The first is Audrey Stocking. She's a German girl, also Jewish, but who is in London using fake papers and running from secrets in her past. She's essentially trying her best to hide. The other is Wesley Bowers. He's an American officer who's been sent over to shadow a British bomb disposal team. Since the Americans back home want to learn as much as they can from the British about defusing German bombs. Now, setting up the story this way with these two characters whose lives intersect may make it sound like it's just another World War II love story. And sure, there's a flavor of romance in the story, absolutely, but if you give it a read, you'll see that there's much more to it than just that. I want you to know that a ton of research went into this story. Um, while fiction, it's still based on the real-life experiences of true bomb disposal teams that worked in London. In fact, I was introduced to the topic of bomb, dis bomb disposal in World War II by Rachel Bowers, who is the granddaughter of my main character, Wesley Bowers, a man who did serve in bomb disposal during the war. And how cool is it that two generations later, his granddaughter Rachel would serve in Iraq, and her job was to ride in front of their nighttime convoys and find roadside bombs. Now here's the fun part for you. After reading In Times of Rain and War, you can download a free follow-up story called Saving Rachel McCallie. It's the true story of Rachel's experience, both serving in Iraq and then facing some trials back home. And here's a hint. For her service in Iraq, Rachel was awarded a Bronze Star, a Purple Heart, and the Army Commendation Medal. That's given for valorous action in direct contact with the enemy. But it's not really the medals that make her story so moving but rather a touching connection between Rachel and her grandfather. So it's pretty great. You get to read an engaging story about Audrey Stocking and Wesley Bowers set in London during the Blitz, and then you get a free follow-up story about Rachel in Iraq that not only details the struggle she faced, but the second story is able to add some depth and detail to the first story that we couldn't know until years later. Lastly, in doing the historical research for a novel set in such a profound time, really, in our history, I gained a, a hallowed appreciation for the World War II generation and the daunting challenges that they endured and essentially struggled to overcome. I think for that reason, I'm excited for others to read this story as well. I hope it will help foster in them, or add to at least, that same gratitude. 
So there you have it in times of rain and war, and then a free follow-up, Saving Rachel McCallie. Give them both a read, and then please drop me a note. You can find me at authorcameronwright.com and tell me what you think. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. In Times of Rain and War is a beautiful story about the human experience and finding hope in hard times. And it's so cool to have a follow-up story to go with it. If you'd like to win Cameron's new book, just enter in the comments the title, In Times of Rain and War. Speaking of great books, one of our favorite new books that just came out is about the life of President Dallin H. Oaks. Here's a sneak peek of the book, In the Hands of the Lord. When he was seven, his father died of tuberculosis, and his grief-stricken mother required help that left him and his siblings parentless for a time. He struggled in school and was bullied by classmates who threw rocks at him and called him names. These challenges as a youth could have sent him into a tailspin, but his grandparents and life on their farm taught him the law of the harvest, that if he sowed well, he could reap well. He threw himself into his books and became a regular at the library. With the encouragement of his family, church leaders, and supportive teachers at school, he gradually grew emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically. And as he began to excel in school, life, and career, he never forgot his commitment to sow the seeds of faith first. His life was built on principled decisions, small and large, made one after another, day after day, year after year, decade after decade. My life, said Dallin H. Oaks, is in the hands of the Lord. In this new book, Richard Turley does a great job at sharing special moments and lessons from the life of President Oaks, some you've probably never heard before. To enter to win this new book, just type in the hands of the Lord in the comments. Also, don't forget, you get 20% off your entire order tonight at DeseretBook.com using our favorite code, SPCONF2021. It's worth it, SPCONF2021. Okay, this next one is really fun. Here to talk about The Gathering Home is Emily Bell Freeman, Jessica Kettle, and Katie Hughes. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Emily Freeman. I'm Katie Hughes. I'm Jessica Kettle. We're so excited to talk to you a little bit about planning for General Conference, kind of what we're doing to plan for General Conference this year. And we thought it'd be so fun if we came to the Conference Center to talk about that. We miss being here so much and just the thought of that kind of a conference. But this year we're thinking about how can we create, what are the simple ways to create a weekend sanctuary of holiness at our own home. So we wanna give you some ideas for that. I don't know if you've heard about our book, The Gathering Home, but at the very back of the book, there are some planning pages to help you plan your general conference weekend with your family. And it's gonna talk about the food. It's gonna talk about what you're gonna do during the sessions and also what you're gonna do in between the sessions. And we're just gonna hit every single one of those today. So Katie's gonna start us off. What do you do uh, in between? What are you guys doing in between the sessions this year? This year, we are focusing on our food storage. Um, Saturday, that just seems like the perfect thing for us to do is to go through our 72-hour kits, make sure we are updating our food, changing out the water, and this feels like something we can do while, while we're listening or also just in between. Um, so that's kind of our main Saturday focus. Okay, good, that's gonna be so good. And just food, activities, yes. what you want. So I'm really share. excited that Easter and conference are on the same weekend this year, which I think is so sweet. Um, and my kids are still little, and so very much still into the Easter egg hunts, Easter bunny, all of those things that are a little bit less Christ-centered. So I'm kind of thinking that we're gonna try and break those things up a little bit and try and knock out like Easter egg hunt and some of those more just like 
fun, happy activities, do those on Saturday, and then really make Sunday more focused on conference and on Easter and having some more Christ-centered conversations and activities. Oh, wow. um, yeah. Also, I sometimes struggle with ideas of what I'm gonna do that's gonna be for my big kids and my little kids. So another thing I wanna point out, we have ideas for Easter and for conference, some of our favorite things if you're stuck. That's I often so stuck. good. Um, one thing that we are big about at our house is food. It's the food that surrounds conference. And we've got favorites. Um, it has to be a hot breakfast both days for my family. Everybody loves that. Uh, Greg will do Mountain Man breakfast with the hash browns and the bacon and the eggs and the house smells so good. We'll do cinnamon rolls. Um, do you guys have any funny conference? Like we do clam dip. Does anyone even eat clam dip anymore? I don't know. I don't even know what that is. Clam dip with Lay's thin potato chips is like a must at our house. So we'll do that. And then we love when conference is at Easter time because Cadbury eggs, just mm -hmm. all those treats, mm -hmm. um, which is so fun to have all that going on. And then um, just thinking about the learning as you're preparing to learn this conference, I love the question that we ask in here, what is your family question or your need for this conference? And just to take a few minutes to think about that individually. But I love this thought of as a family, what, what do you need this year? What are you looking for? And one of the things that I love the most about conference, my kids are older now, you have younger kids and you have a mix of in between. My kids are all grown up and out of the house, but they love to come back for conference. It's a holiday weekend at our house. And the girls love taking notes in a million different ways. So it means all the colors of markers. Sometimes we watercolor the background of our note pages. Um, it's just pulling out that special notebook. And one of the things that we love the most, rather than trying to write down exactly what every person says, is we have started a tradition of what are the promptings that come? And we just write the promptings instead of trying to get every oh, single smart. quote. Mm -hmm. And then it's so fun to go back when the quotes come out mm -hmm. or the talks come out and say, why Why did I feel prompted about this from this talk and to marry those together? Yeah. So just some fun ideas, everybody. If you want some note pages, you'll be able to find them in here, but um, we're so looking forward to spending this weekend together and also with all of you learning all of the good things that will help get us through the next six months. Have a good night. Thank you. Don't you just love these three amazing women? I love the way they use such simple ideas to create a fun and memorable weekend for your family. Personally, I love it when Easter and conference are on the same weekend. Our family has a tradition of making resurrection rolls. I don't know if you've heard it, but it's the one where you put a marshmallow in the roll and you bake it and it dissolves. The roll's empty, but it's sugary goodness. You can win a copy of The Gathering Home as well as a canvas plaque from The Gathering Collection. To enter this giveaway, be sure to comment The Gathering Home. Okay, we're almost at the end already. Can you believe it? Time flies when you're having fun. Next up, the wonderful Julianne Donaldson is going to share an excerpt from her new book, Come Sweet Day. Hi, I'm Julianne Donaldson. I'm the author of Edenbrook and Blackmore and my new book coming out soon, very soon, called Come Sweet Day. And this is a book of thoughts and poetry and beautiful pictures and it's all about holding on to hope in dark times. So I just thought I would share one little selection from this book. I have never enjoyed shopping, which means when I'm on a limited budget, like I have been lately, I'm not tempted to buy things because I never go into stores. Generally, I'll just go without, and that is how I went six months without any light in my garage. Here's the breakdown. One light bulb burned out. I thought, oh well, I could still see. A few months later, another light bulb burned out. It was dim, but I still had the lights on the automatic garage door opener. And then one by one, they each burned out until I was left in darkness. Every time I went into my garage, these were my thoughts. One, it's so dark in here. Two, I don't have any light bulbs. Three, even if I did have light bulbs, the sockets are pretty high up and I don't have a ladder. Four, I don't have time to hunt down a ladder. 
Five, I don't have money to walk into a store that sells light bulbs. I'll be tempted to buy all the things I've been going without. Six, I don't have anyone to help me change the light bulbs. Seven, man, it's dark in here. I would either pull out a flashlight or just fumble around in the dark. A week ago, the sun was out and the snow was melting and I could feel spring getting ready to make her glorious appearance. So I took an afternoon and cleaned out the garage, which had collected lots of leaves, empty boxes, and other detritus from a busy household. As I was cleaning and organizing, I freed up the space along one wall and suddenly had the very original idea to open the blinds of the window. I had a window in my garage the whole time and never once did it occur to me that I could open the blinds. For six months of darkness, all I could consider was what I didn't have. I didn't have money or time or help. And that whole time, I could have simply noticed what I did have because what I already had was exactly enough for my needs. I can't tell you how happy I feel every time I walk into my sunlit garage. It was so easy to let the light in. So very, very easy. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you pick this book up and take a look at it and enjoy the thoughts on holding on to hope in dark times. Um, it's a faith-based book, so I hope that it will get you through your tough times and that you'll be able to share some of the comfort that I have found. Thanks so much. Thank you so much for that message, Julianne. It reminds me that we can always find light even when things might seem dark. If you'd like to win a copy of this book, be sure to enter Come Sweet Day in the comments. Now, before I introduce our last surprise guest, I want to share something really awesome. This weekend will be full of uplifting messages, but sometimes it's hard to remember all the amazing things that our leaders teach us. Have you seen Deseret Books General Conference Journal Editions? They're amazing. After the talks have been given, they will be printed and spiral bound with wide margins for taking notes. Perfect for getting the most out of the messages we hear this weekend. This is mine from last year and I'll tell you, being able to write down my thoughts as I study the talks has really made conference mean that much more to me. These general conference journal editions go so fast, so be sure to pre-order yours tonight. If you'd like to win a copy, enter general conference journal edition in the comments. Now, I'm so excited to introduce our last guest of the night. You're about to see the Truman Brothers perform their song Higher in this special preview of Deseret Books' virtual concert series, The Sessions. Sit down, take a breather in the sunlight this crazy day is almost through Sit down, take a breather, it'll be alright Cause there's someone watching over you Who knows how many angels Generations of love somewhere above They're sending little miracles Decide to lift you up
If you take just a moment and think of someone else The power of His love will grow And lift them and yourself higher That was so cool. Ben and Chad are amazing. If you haven't listened to their new album, Quiet Revolution, you need to. Stream it now on Apple Music or Spotify, or pick it up at DeseretBook.com tonight. The Truman Brothers session of our virtual concert series will be available next Friday on April 9th. The sessions are unique and uplifting virtual concerts featuring your favorite Deseret Book artists and authors. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to go to DeseretBookPresents.com where you can purchase access to any session or a season pass with access to all six concerts. We have one last giveaway, our biggest of the night. To enter to win the Truman Brothers new album and a season pass for the sessions, enter the giveaway by typing Truman Brothers in the comments. Well. We've reached the end of another virtual Family Friday. Thank you all so much for joining us. Make sure to go see the Lamb of God concert film while it's playing in theaters. Learn more at lambofgodmovie.com and stick around to watch the trailer. Thank you so much and have a great weekend. Conquerors through Him that loved us.